Hey guys, it's Frank. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a basic jug line. It's composed of a jug, a drop line. Attached to the drop line is a line with a hook on it. At the end of the drop line is some type of weight. First thing you need to do is get any type of plastic jug that will float. I'll use anything from kitty litter jugs to laundry detergent jugs. You want to get some, some type of twine most. Sporting goods stores will sell it as a trot line twine. I use a pretty basic knot to tie all of everything on a jug line. You're going to make a, a bend in it, pass it through the handle or eye of whatever you're putting it in, pull it, fish it around, go completely around the object, pull it tight. Pull the slack out of the line. After you do that, you want to make an o two overhand knots just to lock this knot in. Now that's secure to the jug. Then you want to take about 20 to 25 feet of line. The way I do it is I'll take it and you and use my wingspan cut it always like to tie a little overhand knot at the end of all of my strings just to keep them from unraveling one thing I do different than most people is I never tie my hook or my weight directly to it. I use what they call a trot line clip. And what this allows me to do is I can change relatively quickly the weight and or the hook if I need to. Same knot. Two overhands to lock it in. For the hook line, what I do is I'll take, go about 18 inches past the line, take it, make a bend in the line, wrap it around my finger, go around the back side of that line, go through the hole my finger just made, and then there's a loop that you can always hook your trot line clip with your hook on. For my hook on, take about 18 inches of string, take me a trot line clip, make my basic simple knot, bend, put through the eye, pass around the thing. And actually you can see this knot here before I tie my backup knots on it, it's tight enough to actually hold it. You wouldn't have to do a backup knot. The reason I do a backup knot is with larger fish, they will sometimes pull through. And just in case that line does become loose, two overhand knots. One thing when you select a hook, you always want to have a wider eye on it because it's the string's a little thick, but you're going to do the basic same. Make your bend through the eye, around the hook, and pull it tight. That's the hook. For my weight, you can use anything, roughly two to three pounds, and you can go larger or smaller as needed. That's why I tie my weights on the way I do with the trot line clips. I'm using a standard brick for the weight. I'm going to take about 8 to 12 inches of paracord. Always tie just an overhand knot at each end. And what that overhand knot will do is if the knot uh, tying the brick starts to slip, that overhand knot will actually stop it from pulling through. So you're going to take the brick, pass it through the eye, do two overhand knots.
Then you have your brick to attach your weight to it. Just take the trot line clip, slide it tight. Now it's secure. Is if you can get you a bucket. Doesn't matter the size, whatever. And what this is good for, you could put your weights. You can put, if you see here, I put my hooks actually hanging on the side with the lines laying in. And what I do, I normally make about two to three times the amount of hooks as I do jug lines. And that way when I do catch a fish on the jug line, I can pull it out, unclip the trot clip, have another hook already baited, clip it back on, and then throw it back overboard. So now that you're done with your jug lines, you want to pick them up. What's great about the way I do it, you take it, take your hook line off of your drop line, set it in your bucket, take your weight, take your weight off of your drop line, set the weight in the bucket, and you can take the line, wrap it around the neck of your bottle. I always try to keep where I attach my hook line to out. Now, one thing while you're doing this, you can also look at is if you need to change the depth, it's easy to change the depth that you're fishing with these. It's easy to change the weight for larger species of fish. Also, make sure you check your state regulations or even local reservations. So now, with that hook out, where you connect the hook to, you take the trot line clip where you connect your weight, put it in, and you don't have to worry about it unraveling, and it's relatively simple to keep them stored. Now, you want to make sure you check your state and local regulations. Um, in Louisiana, there's really no regulations on time limit or anything like that that I could find saying how often you have to check them but within 10 miles of my house where I normally fish with them there is a federal preserve that you can use them on to where you have to have your name phone number and last time it was set and you have to check your lines every 24 hours and remove them once they are done fishing and I would always recommend checking them at least 24 hours every 24 hours and the reasoning is is if you get a turtle or alligator or anything like that caught up on them, it can drown them. Have a good day and I hope this video was very informative. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new content.